attacked by a bear. From Stories of Survival by Fiona Bedell. Published by Pearson Education Limited in association with Penguin Books Limited. The American West was a dangerous place for white people in 1823. Near the Missouri River, Hugh Glass and his friends were looking for animal skins that they could sell at home in the East. But their trip was not going well. Seventeen of them were already dead, killed in two different Native American attacks in the last few weeks. They moved as quickly and quietly as possible, fearing another attack. They always stayed in a group. But Hugh Glass did not always like the company of the others. One afternoon, he decided to walk through the woods alone. Suddenly, he saw a grizzly bear. A mother with three babies. As Glass lifted his gun to the bear, she ran towards him. She stood up on her back legs, two meters tall. Glass shot at her. The bear was hurt, but still she attacked him with her front legs. He fell to the ground, screaming. She bit him and hit him, but she was losing blood. Soon, she was dead, on top of Glass. Some of his friends heard Glass's screams. They came running. When they saw the dead bear with a man's body under it, they thought the worst. Another dead friend. They couldn't believe it when they pushed the bear away. Glass was still alive. It seemed impossible that he could survive many more hours, though. His neck was very badly cut. Large parts of his skin were gone on his head, his face, his back, his chest. A shoulder, a leg, an arm, a hand. And they had no medicine for him. They tied some cloths around his cuts, but could do nothing more. They waited for him to die in the night. But to everyone's surprise, he did not die that first night. This was good news, and bad. What could they do with the dying man? There were Native American enemies all around them. It was too dangerous to stay in one place. Their boss, Andrew Henry, told them to make a bed for glass with some long sticks. For two days, they continued on their way, carrying glass on this bed. But it was terribly painful for Glass when he was awake. And it was terribly hard work for the men who were carrying him. On the third day, Henry stopped his men. We can't continue like this, he said. We'll all be dead soon if we can't travel faster. I need two people to stay with Glass. When he's dead, you can come after us. I'll pay you well for your trouble. Two men, Fitzgerald and Bridger, decided to stay with Glass. They badly wanted the money that Henry offered. They watched nervously as their other friends said goodbye. After four scary days by Glass's side, their friend was getting worse, not better. But his heart was still going. Until his heart stopped, Fitzgerald and Bridger could not leave. And an attack by Native Americans was possible at any time. We should leave him, said Fitzgerald on the fifth day. Our own deaths won't help Glass to live. 
But we can't just go, replied Bridger. When he dies, we'll have to take all his things with us. If we don't have them, it'll be clear to everyone. They'll know that we didn't wait with him, and then we won't get our money. Then we'll have to take his things now, said Fitzgerald. But we can't leave him here without a gun. He'll be dead soon. Dead men don't need guns. They continued to discuss the matter for some time. Glass could not speak because of the great cut in his neck, but he could hear every word of their discussion. He waved his arms at his friends. No, he said with his eyes, don't leave me. But soon the two men picked up Glass's bag and his gun. They moved his bed nearer to the river and put a coat over his bloody body. Then they disappeared. Glass was very angry. Fitzgerald and Bridger were not just bad friends, they were thieves. I'm not going to die until I get my gun back, he promised himself. For four or five days, he could not move. During that time, he was robbed again when wild animals took his coat, but then he started to feel stronger. From his bed, he put his hand into the river and got himself some water. He reached into the trees and picked some little fruits, but this was not enough. He lay on his bed, waiting for some luck. It came. One day, he woke up and saw a snake sleeping in the sun near his bed. Glass killed it by hitting it with a stone. Then he broke it into small pieces between two stones and ate it. Stronger after this meal, he got up from his bed. It was time to get his gun back. He soon found that he could not walk, but he could pull and push himself along the ground with one arm and one leg. At first he could only go about 50 meters a day. Help was 320 kilometers away along the river at Fort Kiowa. But Glass refused to believe that this goal was impossible. As a younger man, Glass lived with Native Americans for a few years. He knew all the plants that made good food. He knew the best places to find birds' eggs on the ground too. He was never hungry. Using his one good arm and one good leg, he was soon moving three or four kilometers a day. One day, he found wild dogs eating a dead animal. When their stomachs were full, Glass scared the dogs away. For the next few days, he stayed by the dead animal. He ate, rested, and looked after himself. Slowly, he was getting better. Only the cuts on his back were a worry. He could not reach them to clean out the insects inside. When he started traveling again, he could walk. He carried a big stick. With this, he could kill small animals in his path. So he could now eat plenty of meat. One day, when he was looking for food, he met a group of Native Americans. Luckily, they were friendly to white men. They cleaned the cuts on his back and took him to Fort Kiowa. With a new gun on his back, Glass was soon on a boat to Fort Henry. He hoped to find Bridger, Fitzgerald and his stolen gun there. But even now, he was not out of danger. The boat was attacked by Native Americans and all the men on it were killed. Glass was lucky. At the time of the attack, he was on land, looking for food. Without a boat, 
Glass now had to reach Fort Henry, 400 kilometers away, on foot. But this was no problem for a man like Glass. After a month of walking through snow and ice, with no shelter at night, he found Andrew Henry and his men. When they first saw Glass, they were very scared. The person in front of them was very thin. He was like Glass, but different. They knew from Bridger and Fitzgerald that Glass was dead. So who, or what, was this man? Glass started to tell them his story. The men's fears left them, and they were soon welcoming Glass warmly. Only Bridger was silent. He felt terrible about leaving Glass alone. He felt terrible about his own lies. And he felt scared. What did Glass plan to do to him? Glass looked at Bridger, nineteen years old, and shaking with fear. He could not hurt this boy. He wanted his gun. Fitzgerald has it, said Bridger, but he isn't here. For four more months, Glass looked for Fitzgerald. He thought about shooting him for his crimes. But Fitzgerald was a soldier now. When Glass finally found him, he was well protected. Murder was impossible. Glass shouted angrily at Fitzgerald, at his officers and at the other soldiers. But when he left, he was a happy man. Over his shoulder, he carried his favourite gun. <laughs>